Hi, thanks for joining me today again. I'm Barb Stillmer with Biz Business Success, and today I want to talk to you about being, feeling, and having. And um, in business, we want to spend our time creating something that has some kind of success for us, that is bringing in money, that makes us feel like we are accomplishing something, and that is recognized by other people as being valuable. And I think when we take a step back from that, um, uh, we find that this, this component of being um, successful and feeling successful and having success are all kind of internal things. They're not really things that come from outside. So let's take a look at these, these three components of what makes us who we are and how we can step up and be more in line with our own purpose by having these three things um, align within us. So um, being is really this, this state that we, we have, we, we, we wanna be unique. We want to be successful. We wanna be loved. We wanna be sought after. We wanna be seen and uh, these, these components of being are, are something that we, we put effort into and we, and we know that if we can be a certain way, um, then we can create something that is successful for ourselves. And that old adage of uh, fake it till you make it, like be something until that being becomes who we are, is not really true if what we are doing is faked. Uh, we actually have to step into that being before we can become it. And it feels like a little like a catch 22, like how can you be something that you're not and try to you, do that until you become it. But it's, it's really putting it on and recognizing that this is who you're going to be. This is, you need to act this, this way to actually become that person. And um, I think the being component up front is, uh, we're wearing it for a short period of time and creating and, and, and practicing to become that all the time. So it is more of a practice as opposed to a, a fallacy. It's not a faked something. It is how we become better at it by practicing becoming that person over and over again. So the being component of who we are is something that we have to practice like anything in life, no one is the expert the first time that they try it. No one is the best at something the, the, the first time they roll it out, the first time they, they uh, try it on. This video isn't the first time that I've done this content and it's not the first time that, um, I, and the first time I did it, it, was, it wasn't even for other people. We have to try things on and continually hone the expertise to be better at something. So the feeling component of, of, of this, um, this trilogy to our purpose in life um, is we, we want to feel like we belong. We want to feel like um, we're valuable, that, that, that we're significant in life, that we, we are competent at what we do. We want to feel like we're enough. I mean, we spend a lot of time feeling like that we, we need something else, that we can't move forward because we don't have enough time, we don't have enough money, we don't have enough experience, we don't have enough education. We, we aren't enough uh, to be able to move forward and, and that feeling stops us from being. I mean, if we feel like we are fake at something, we will come across as fake. If we feel like we aren't enough and we, we're not actually... Um, that we can't do something because we don't have enough, we will come across as not being enough. I mean, you can't practice being better at something if you step into it thinking that you're not good enough to actually practice it. So when you, when you uh, step into that practice component of who you are, or you step into that, that first time that you're going to do something, you have to feel like you deserve to be able to do this. You have to feel like you are enough and wherever you are right now is absolutely enough to be able to do what you need to do. You don't have to fake, you don't have to feel fake, and you don't have to feel like you're not enough to be able to, to step into that first piece of being, to be able to get to the place where you feel like you are enough, where you, 
You can be the expert at what you do. You can show up as the person who, who has the answers, who, who can give the best solutions, who can offer uh, the best service or the best product or the best price or whatever it is in your life and your business that is um, where you want to be. The purpose that you have to fulfill can't be fulfilled until you feel like you have the right to do that. And that is the have. That you have to feel like you have what it takes to be able to do it. And that also requires practice. I mean, it also requires the fact that you are the only person that can give that to yourself. And while you're practicing, getting feedback from other people, I mean, um, think about, uh, a, a, an easy thing to think about is um, if you are, um, working towards something. So let's say you were, um, when you were in school, when you got better at something, when you got your grades, the feedback was, was the grades and, and anything that your teacher said to you about how you um, accomplished or um, how successful you were at anything that you did in school, the feedback was someone else's. But the having was what was um, your internal feelings. You had those good grades and you felt like you were actually capable of being that person. Uh, the younger you get got um, this kind of positive feedback, the earlier you felt that you were capable of doing things. Uh, if someone told you you were smart when you were really young, you probably went through life feeling like you were smart and capable. If someone told you that you needed help in school because this wasn't your core competency, um, or if, um, God forbid, someone told you you were stupid, um, you probably felt that you weren't capable of doing this. You didn't have the self-confidence to do it. So having the things that you have to have first, you have to feel like you are worthy. You have to, we want to feel loved and you have to have self-love to start that. You, no one else is going to love you if you don't love yourself first. Um, you have to feel confidence. You have to have that self-confidence and that comes from the feedback that you've received. So um, solicit feedback if you have to. Try it out on other people that you know will give you honest feedback and then, um, and then take it forward. If you're trying to build a business and you're looking um, to be able to create that path of strategy to do it, then go and find an expert, someone like me who can help you and give you honest feedback of what it is that you're building to find out whether or not it's something you can actually achieve. And, and tweak it as you're going along. But, but to be able to do it, you have to have that confidence um, that what you're putting out is actually valuable, that it's actually going to work, that, it's, that it is a good idea and that it is um, realistic and you can actually get there. I think some of the having is having personal resources. And that includes um, uh, having influence. So you may have connections people who can um, Im have give you influence, but having your own influence, being able to go to the bank and ask for a loan, being able to um, influence others about the idea that you have so that you can get a partner or a connector or a, an affiliate that can ha share who it is and what you do and what the successes that you've had and, um, and what value you bring. Uh, in what you're trying to offer. Um, so this having component is, is really su uh, the support that you need to be able to create the, um, the base and the foundation of what it is that you're going to, to offer. We need the resources inside our business so that we can feel like we, we actually can go and do the things that we want to do. I had a student in the past who who was a mother um, and she was a young mother. She had been a young mother. She wasn't young at the time. She was coming back to school and her kids were still young and the resources that she needed to be able to go to school, she had to have people in place who were willing to look after her kids for her to go to school. Cause you know, I, I remember talking to her about this saying the first time, uh, you know, one of the most expensive daycare years that we had, because when I started my business, my youngest was two years old the most expensive daycare year we had was $12,000 in daycare. And my business had to make not just enough to pay for the daycare, but enough for me to not be in a job working in someone else's company that we could actually afford for me to do the things that I was doing. 
And that meant that I had to make more than $12,000 in the first year. My, my break even for the first year was met within 10 months. And that was 10 months of putting out money, putting out money, putting out money and still having to pay for daycare. And here she is saying, you know, if I work part time, this, you know, $12,000 in daycare would be almost impossible for me to manage. And here I am going back to school, which means I'm not working and I need more resources to do that. So having those people that are on your side, the people who can uh, support you in what you're going to do, can take on some of the work so that you can do it, can um, hold you accountable or cheer you on or recognize with you the challenges that you're having and know how to get you past that. Those pieces are the, are the things that are, are you know, difficult for us to do in life and they're hard for us to, to reach. The having is the foundation of what we can do to be able to feel like we are capable of doing it so that we can be the person that we're supposed to be in life and, and affect um, the people around us in the way that our purpose has drawn us to do. So I hope that you have what you need so you can feel like you can reach the uh, place that you are supposed to reach so that you can be the person you're supposed to be in life. That's my wish for you.